good morning children today we will discuss an interesting chapter the black aeroplane this story is written by frederick forsey frederick is a british novelist journalist former spy and occasional political commentator he is also known for his thrillers so this story is going to be an interesting one where he is trying to reflect that how sometimes when you are in a perilous situation your judgment get distorted due to maybe the problem or maybe due to fantasizing and how you come out of it so actually when you will go through this story you will find that the narrator he is a pilot and he is very eager to go back to his family he is missing his english breakfast and all of sudden he faces a huge black storm he enters the storm and then he is in trouble but miraculously he somehow manages to escape with the help of a mysterious aeroplane now the question rises here whether that aeroplane was a reality or it was his fantasy whether he was hallucinating what was that so this question remain unanswered till the end actually the writer wants you to think as a reader that what happened what was the reality whether it was a mystery or maybe genuinely it was a real aeroplane who later on moved somewhere else after helping him whatever had happened but one good thing happened that he was he very safely landed so let's begin the story now the moon was coming up in the east behind me and stars were shining in the clear sky above me there wasn't a cloud in the sky i was happy to be alone high up above the sleeping countryside i was flying my old takota aeroplane over france back to england i was dreaming of my holiday and looking forward to being with my family i looked at my watch 1:30 in the morning so the narrator he himself is narrating the story that it was night time sky was clear and the stars could be seen twinkling no problem everything was going on well pilot was feeling relaxed that he was above a country which has fallen asleep hmm? he was flying his old jakota aeroplane going back to england dreaming of his holiday yes he wanted to go back to his family he was planning for ho about holidaying with his family and also he was badly missing his uh, english breakfast so everything was going on well till now and then he looked at his watch 1:30 in the morning so till now all well i should call paris control soon i thought as i looked down past the nose of the aeroplane front part i saw the lights of a big city in front of me i switched on the radio and said paris control jakota ds 088 here can you hear me i am on my way to england over the voice from the radio answered me immediately ds 088 i can hear you you ought to turn 12 degrees west now ds 088 over now this is the normal you know routine work that if you are flying above any country it is your duty to inform the control room so he also informed he was in france and he informed the paris control about its presence and also for instruction if you are uh, flying in sky if you are uh, maybe in the water it is important you know there is compass which will actually tell you the direction but it is important for you to have a connectivity with the control room for the proper guidance 
At that time, lights from the Paris city were blaring at him. After informing control agency, they replied him also that yes, we can hear you and you ought to turn 12 degrees west now. So, that was the instruction which was given by the Paris control room. I checked the map and the compass. Compass, you know, you are might be knowing it is instrument for telling directions. Switched over to my second and last fuel tank and turned the Dakota 12 degrees west towards England. I will be in time for breakfast, I thought. A good big English breakfast. Everything was going well. It was an easy flight. So he received the instructions. The pilot, he followed it and while putting the last fuel tank, now this is the point, point to be noted, that second and last fuel tank, all the time he was dreaming about going back to his family. He also started thinking about having a satisfactory breakfast. He was calm and everything was going according to his plan. So when the story begins, you know, this is the way of writing a story, that everything is going on well, there is no problem. And then the problem will come, definitely. There is the climax part. Paris was about 150 kilometers behind me when I saw the clouds, storm clouds. They were huge. They looked like black mountains standing in front of me across the sky. I knew I could not fly up and over them and I did not have enough fuel to fly around them to the north or south. I ought to go back to Paris, I thought, but I wanted to get home. I wanted the breakfast. I will take the risk, I thought and flew the old Dakota straight into the storm. Now, that was the huge mistake he did. He has moved 150 kilometers away from Paris. As everything was going on smoothly, something happened. There is always a twist in the story and the twist came. What happened? He saw the huge storm of clouds. They were like black mountains. Hmm? The presence of clouds was... You know, it is going to make the fly, the flight unsafe. Obviously, there was a great chance of a storm. They were, I told you, so huge and dark that the pilot compared them with black mountains. Now, he knew he couldn't pass them as it was impossible to go above them or escape them with the amount of fuel that was left in the last tank, second or last tank he was using. So he cannot take a round, just imagine, visual imagine, that he cannot take a round either from south or north and he cannot go upward. It was an old Dakota also. So the right decision would have been to fly back to Paris safely. If any sensible person, what they would have done? They would have gone back to Paris. They were only away 150 kilometers. But, but, but. The pilot's decision making was clouded by his wish to meet his family. Again, he is saying that he desperately wanted to be with his family and have that English breakfast he had been dreaming of all day. And so, he took the risk of not going back. And what did he do? He decided to enter into the storm. And he did. Inside the clouds, everything was suddenly black. It was impossible to see anything outside the aeroplane. The old aeroplane jumped and twisted in the air. It happens because of the pressure of that storm. So finally, he entered. It was so dark, he was unable to see. Nothing was visible. He was not able to see anything. And you know, the aeroplane started taking a joke, twisted. He looked at the compass. I couldn't believe my eyes. The compass was turning round and round and round. 
see the emphasis the writer has put here. Round and round and mad. That means the compass was not working. It had stopped working. Why? Because of that storm. It was dead. It would not work. The other instruments were suddenly dead too. I tried the radio. But unfortunately, nothing was working. Paris control, Paris control, can you hear me? There was no answer. The radio was dead too. I had no radio, no compass and I could not see where I was. I was lost in the storm. And then in the black clouds quite near me, I saw another aeroplane. And here the story will take a turn, a twist. What happened? He was lost in the black storm. He was not able to contact the Paris control agency. He was not able to take help of compass. Nothing was working. And then in the midst of nowhere, when everything failed, suddenly he saw what? A mysterious black aeroplane. So that's all for the today. Tomorrow again when we will meet for the next class, we will continue the chapter. Thank you children.